related. Oh, sp speaking of which, um, I'm I'm representing here. You can see that I've got my. Uh, so. Oh, you got your you got your logo on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right on. I should have done and that. We do, I, got, I, got, I have some and, and things like that. We do have a comment, actually. Oh, we do. So we have to acknowledge yep. that, especially because of our our contest. Uh, this is from Patrick, right? Yep. I disagree. The old logo style is common. And he said the new Space Force logo, I agree, is a literal ripoff of the Star Trek logo. <laughs> so as was the original uh, U.S. Space Command logo, uh, Patrick. I just want to point that out. So the original space, which was designed in 1982, is pretty much a ripoff of Starfleet. So um, the, the other article I have here for you is from Trek Today. And this is uh, from an interview from Jerry Ryan uh, regarding our topic tonight, which is uh, the new Picard series. And it's the article is titled, it says, Seven of Nine, Not a Picard Fan. And so this is this is pretty interesting. These are comments I believe that were made by Jerry Ryan uh, during an interview. I think I think at the premiere of Picard. Uh, it says that this video in particular came from IGN, um, and she says, "quote Seven's not on the oh he's a god bandwagon," said Ryan, referring to Jean Luc Picard. They, Seven and Hugh, have seen a lot of dark crap in the last twenty years. She says, Seven, I think, holds Starfleet and the Federation in large part responsible for much of it. The universe is a mess, and I think she sort of initially sees Picard as a representation of that. She's been working with a sort of group of freedom fighters called the Fenris Rangers, who are trying to keep some semblance of order in the mess that is the galaxy. So we have this apparently new faction uh, that's going to be introduced in Picard. Uh, it has not been introduced at this point, uh, but I don't know if you guys had heard about this, but uh, these were some comments that Jerry Ryan made in, in regards to who Seven is now and what her attitude is towards Picard and what she's actually doing and how she's involved in the in the story. So um, kind of, have you guys heard this before? Um, I had not heard any of this about the Fenris Rangers, but uh, the she references Norse mythology. This uh, the monstrous Rolf, the uh, the Fenris was actually going to have a role in the Star God series I worked on back in the mid to late nineties. Um, we oh, never really? got there. Yeah, the Fenris was actually um, sort of like a, a big bad monster that um, uh, darn what was the name of the main villain? It was sort of like uh, kind of the same way that um, Hela used. Uh, I think that was basically supposed to be Fenris as well in Thor Ragnarok. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that um, – uh, wow, what was his name? I want to say it was Anacron. That's not right. Maybe it was Anacron. Anyhow, our big bad in Star Gods, uh, Fenris, actually. So I'm familiar with the idea of the character, um, but I hadn't heard all this stuff that she's part of a, a freedom fighting group and, and that they're calling themselves the – the Fenris Rangers. I hadn't heard that at all. Yeah, it's kind of interesting because on the one hand, it sounds like they're, I guess, I'm not, I'm trying to think of an equivalent. Uh, they sound like they might be kind of in the realm of, uh, I guess, bounty hunters, for lack of a better term, in terms of they seem to be trying, based on what she's saying here, uh, they're trying to kind of keep law and order on both sides of the neutral zone because presumably there is no neutral zone anymore because the Romulan Star Empire is falling apart, but we don't know exactly what that status is. So I guess the the picture I have in my head is that the area is very lawless and chaotic, uh, that neither the Federation or the Romulans have really taken control, or maybe the Romulans are just all over the place. I don't know. Mm. It's, obviously, this hasn't been introduced yet, but uh, the fact that they call themselves Rangers, um, <laughs> the, the, when I first saw this article, because I, I kind of looked at it really quick, uh, mm -hmm. when, when I first heard about this, I was like, the first thing that came to my head was Babylon 5. That was the first thing mm -hmm. that went to my head was Babylon 5. Um, so it, it'll be interesting to see what the actual implementation of this is. Um, but uh, clearly she's trying to say that uh, when we, we first encounter Seven, she's not going to be very happy with Picard, and she's not going to be someone who's a big supporter of his. Interesting. 
Yeah, uh, like I said, um, I may be confused on a lot of this, but um, my my only thought is that. Uh, oh, okay, yeah, it's a monstrous wolf of North mythology. Um, anyhow, yeah, Patrick um, has like a quite a bit of information there on the uh, on the North mythology part of this. Mm -hmm. Although I don't know, I honestly don't know how relevant that's going to be to this group. That's also yeah. what I'm wondering is, 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 does the name really mean something? I don't know. Well, it'll be interesting to see um, how they play it out and, and what they do. And uh, Katie well, also commented that she can see why Seven of Nine holds some grudge against Picard. She said uh, Fenris is, is wolf and Old Norse, making reference to the monstrous hunting wolf. Therefore, they seem to be a hunter or law enforcement. Um, and that's kind of the thing that I'm wondering is, are they more hunter or are they more law enforcement? You know, what are they exactly? So right. that we don't know. Uh, we'll, we'll have to see, I guess, as the show progresses. But I'd only just, I personally only just heard about this. And so I was, it, it kind of fascinated me, this, this idea of this uh, additional faction, these rangers. Uh, that apparently are are sort of policing the neutral zone, for lack of a better term. Hmm. Interesting. I uh, I don't want to jump the gun with that, but uh, I, there's some very very apparent parallels with some of the the names that they're applying and the way that they've set up the the first episode of Picard. But we'll we'll jump into that when we start uh, start chatting about that. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, and I, I do want to add, we had, we have been actually reviewing the Picard comic, um, actually as a part of the show, and the third issue is currently out. Um, however, circumstances as they are, um, we weren't able to uh, to cover it for this particular episode, um, but hopefully next episode, if we get a chance, we'll actually review the third the uh, the third issue of the Picard series countdown um and hopefully we'll figure out how it all ties together because depending upon how things went down with the uh, uh the first episode a, a beloved next gen character may or may not be alive so right yeah we actually um i mentioned that i was on the uh starfleet underground podcast uh we recorded that on saturday i think it came out sunday night so it's now available on uh, i believe it's starfleetunderground.com i think is their their website um, yeah, w one of the other uh, panelists uh, for that show was reading the comics as well. And so we totally went there and we're talking about that. Uh, we mentioned that on a previous episode of our show, uh, that there are some major implications for a major legacy character uh, yeah. because of what's going on in the comic book. So I I'm curious whether they're even going to touch on that in this, in this last issue. And I did make an attempt. I did actually go to my closest comic book store and I tried to get a copy. They were all sold out. So I, I, I'm going to have to uh, go out wider and uh, get myself a copy because, you know, I'm a physical copy guy. So I got to right, right. go find myself a physical copy of the book. Uh, but we have reviewed it previously, the, 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 the two previous uh, comic yeah. book issues. A Alec, are you familiar with the Picard Countdown comic? Um, not more than what I've been reading on Reddit and trying to avoid spoilers, but uh, I haven't read Reddit at, at all. Yeah, it's it, it, there. There, there is some. See, I, that's what I'm wondering. I don't even know if there is a whole lot of spoilers in it or not. It, it seems to be kind of like a, a side quest, if you will. But but there's some there's something in it that could have major implications for the Picard uh, the Picard show. Um, so we're trying to figure that out whether they're going to uh, you know talk about that more in the show later or if that's going to be in the third issue or what. So fortunately, I don't have that answer because we haven't read it, but. I guess we'll find out in time. And I want to apologize in advance. My throat's a little scratchy and stuff, so I have uh, I am partaking of some uh, cough drops and different things. Uh, everyone didn't have to watch me like chug an airborne before we went live. Um, <laughs> so, so if you see me like chawing on something or looks like I'm obviously have something in my mouth, it's just because I'm trying to prevent from coughing and and hopefully getting any worse. I would do. Weren't you in China recently, Dave? <laughs> oh. I knew you were going to. I, I knew that was going to come up. I knew that was going to come up. <laughs> Talk about current events, but yeah, I, that, that's my story. That's all I've got. Yeah, no. Uh, Patrick uh, has a good. 
Patrick has a good question, by the way. He says, are, are the comics in line with the show? Are the producers of both products working with each other? And the answer is, I believe one of the writers from Picard uh, was one of the co-writers for Picard Countdown. Does that sound right, Dave? Yeah. Um, I can double check that if you can vamp here while I pull it up. Yeah, I, um, but yeah. I, as I understand it, Patrick, the, um, the one of the writers for Picard is credited as one of the writers for uh, Picard Countdown. Now, I always say this. I always, always say this. Unfortunately, you have to take the comics and the books with a grain of salt when it comes to canon issues and things like that. Because unfortunately, even when uh, writers and producers are involved with the comic book, uh, the next writer or producer comes along, never read it, doesn't care, and just does something completely different. It happens all the time in Star Trek, Star Wars, uh, lots of other properties that are primarily based on something else, meaning they're either based on movies or they're based on television. Uh, the comics you always have to take with a grain of salt. The big thing about the Picard Countdown comic was that uh, I think it was kind of meant to um, kind of contradict the original Star Trek Countdown comic book, which was actually a bridge between the Kelvin universe and Next Generation. And um, I think they decided, obviously, um, that they were going in a different direction, uh, in particular with Data, uh, because in the, the original Star Trek Countdown comic, uh, Data actually uh, is basically B4 has become Data. So if you're not familiar right. with that one. So that that's gone. That's all gone. And so I don't think there's any um, coincidence that the Picard comic book is called Countdown when they already had a Star Trek Countdown book. And interestingly enough, that book also had writers involved <laughs> with that book from the movie, but apparently they're discarding it, you know? So you always kind of yeah. have to take it with a grain of salt. So Kirsten Beyer, uh, who is actually one of the, um, yeah, Kirsten Beyer, you know, one of the uh, executive producers, and I think she's actually one of the showrunners for Picard. Um, she actually is... Uh, uh, actually worked on the comic, so it it does uh, essentially tie in there, um, and we know that too from reading it, right? So it's just a question of how how much does it tie in, and they set up an awful lot of premises to to wrap up in that third issue. So yeah, that's so. and that's my big concern too. Is is uh, there's a lot going on in that second issue of that series? There's only three books, and there's a lot going on in that second comic book, and I'm like. How are you going to resolve all this in, in just one more issue? So I guess the answer is we'll see because we haven't got it yet. We haven't, we haven't had a chance to read it. But ho hopefully next episode um, we will uh, get the chance to uh, to read it and, and review it. And I want to do a quick reminder here real fast for you. Uh, um, again, just a reminder, a thank you to everyone who's commented. You have been entered into a contest to potentially win this original art sketch card from Arrow Season 4. This is an official Cryptozoic card. Um, this was obviously drawn and signed by me. This was part of their official release set. This is actually original art on this card. It is not a print. Um, and this is from, uh, like I said, Arrow Season 4. And uh, everyone who comments has entered into a drawing before the end of the show. We will announce um, who has actually won this. Uh, again, shipping only in the United States, please. Um, but I just want to make that announcement one more time because we have people probably continuing to join us as the show is going on. Awesome. Cool. All right. All right. 